the visuals we see, the repetitious phrases we hear, the repetitive shocking facts that we're forced to look at put us into a very fearful and distressing state and what this does is it implies that the future of humanity is going to look like this for years to come now i'm honing in on this concept of certainty and inevitability and certain chaos because that is the exact mindset that the creators of this world want us to have today i'm going to talk to you about a crucial choice that you have to make recently humanity went through a vibrational shift we were victims of trauma-based mind control this was achieved because the powers at were controlled the media outlets and while they were busy projecting fear via the mainstream media and their socials and so on they didn't clock that the collective have gone through a massive awakening that shift in vibration frightened the powers that were and what they decided to do was to traumatize all of us again through conflict through mass genocide and war now there are many conflicts that are happening in the world at the moment but there is one now that is depicted behind me that is being thrown in our faces via the media outlets so in my opinion what we are seeing is a massive push to regain power and control over our minds and our collective vibration the visuals we see the repetitious phrases we hear the repetitive shocking facts that we're forced to look at put us into a very fearful and distressing state and what this does is it implies that the future of humanity is going to look like this uh, for years to come S through the mainstream media certain scenarios are infused into our collective mind before these events even happen one of the ways they do this is through the movies and in the entertainment industry and through the news um if you want me to do a separate video about the demonic side of Hollywood and entertainment, like this video and uh, let me know in the comments. So uh, coming back to this example, what they do is they show us all of this imagery in order to draw our collective uh, energy and our level of consciousness down. So that when they finally manifest this in our reality, it looks like it would always be inevitable. This is not to minimise the pain or suffering of any victims of these senseless wars. But what I am saying is that these conflicts are projected to us to imply that they are always going to happen no matter what we do, which is a lie. It is a lie that makes us believe that we are not creators of our own experience because you know who would ever wish pain and suffering on uh, that scale on anybody right and it also makes it look like that the powers that were are more powerful than us as individuals now i'm honing in on this concept of certainty and inevitability and certain chaos because that is the exact mindset that the creators of this world want us to have whether we are deep into an awakening journey or if we're just uh, at the beginning of our journey and starting to question reality and the decisions that are being made on our behalf by these uh, governments and so on so wherever we are on that awakening spectrum is very important to realize that they are putting all of their energy into making uh, doom and gloom and chaos look like it's inevitable now chaos does have a positive form we need chaos to come in anytime we want to create something new but the powers that were 
are specifically using chaos in its negative form as a way to create more trauma and fear within the collective so that we drop our vibration back down into survival mode where it's very easily controlled. That is called chaos sorcery. And we don't want to be listening to any uh, creators that are helping chaos sorcery come into fruition. Even if they are doing it accident accidentally or with good intent. So it's important not to pay attention to these individuals because that is how they win the mental war. That is how they trick people out of their own sovereignty by vying for it and doing everything possible to limit our own personal power while at the same time not even letting us know that we have it and that they even want it. So what's happening now in the collective is a strong push to traumatise us and to distract us from our own collective enlightenment journey. And our collective vibration wasn't even raising into um, you know, massive heights where, wow, everyone's enlightened all of a sudden. Um, it only raised slightly to the point where almost everyone was questioning the powers that were and what they were doing and uh, why these situations keep coming up again and again. And that's scary to them because as a collective, it shows that we are starting to have more self-respect we're starting to say, hold on, this can't keep happening. This is absolutely ridiculous. But when you infuse trauma into the collective, we start to retreat because all of a sudden questioning becomes a luxury for people who do not live in the midst of war and chaos. So us who are uh, here and are away from that, we feel guilt and we feel shame which is at the very bottom at the human scale of consciousness. It's close to death. At the top of the scale of consciousness, there's creativity, which is around the level of reasoning. So we are extremely lucky to be here, to be creating and watching content uh, that will help uplift us and help uplift others. And creativity is also what allows us to question the world around us so that we can start uh, bringing in uh, new ideas and inventing new systems and so on. So it's simply just a higher state of existence, a higher vibration um, than never really questioning anything at all or feeling guilty for what we are seeing on the, uh, in the media. So what we need to do as the world uh, goes into this sympathetic and rightly em empathic state, we need to go into a prophetic state of mind. So when it comes to carrying on with our awakening journey as a collective, it's really important to look at individuals or maybe communities who are extremely uh, pe pessimistic and negative about what is going on, which is, of course, a completely natural reaction, sure. But also, on the other side of the coin, it's playing a very dangerous game. It's basically gambling and betting against ourselves and amplifying our weaknesses instead of amplifying our strengths. So uh, thinking about the subconscious mind, when we bet on the worst possible outcome and start speaking that into existence as though it has already happened, no matter what our intention is, we are literally gambling with our futures. And I know how hard that is with all of the imagery and uh, all of the information that we are getting from socials and so on. But engaging with it in a pessimistic way will make it look like it's the most dominant timeline. And I personally feel like we have been able to halt certain things that have happened in our near past 
before by uh, not engaging with it. For example, that thing that happened in 2020 where the world lost its mind and we almost needed a passport just to get into a supermarket. I strongly believe that we were able to manifest above that timeline because we started standing up for ourselves and we uh, stopped engaging with the constant messages that we were getting from the media. So similarly, when we start betting against the sovereign within us and we start saying things like, oh no, um, this is going to be World War Three again, it's so close. Our, con- our subconscious, sorry, will begin to frame that and project it out into our reality. So, in a way, they are using this conflict to dumb us down and to push our consciousness down and scare us back into these dark negative timelines that they have planned out for us. Timelines that our vibration has already naturally outgrown. So all of us have a choice to make. And that choice is going to line us up with different probable futures. What timelines we access is dependent on how much of our emotional energy gets fed into what they are trying, keyword trying, to create. That is what will determine everybody's future. So reaching those higher timelines and aiming high, that does not mean that there is not going to be a lot of challenges and chaos on our way to those positive timelines. But there is a massive difference between experiencing the chaos that comes naturally with bringing about positive outcomes versus experiencing chaos that creates lower outcomes that are more in line with the military industrial complex. Remaining sovereign and grounded in these times when we are seeing so much pain and suffering taking place around us is not me asking you to spiritually bypass and ignore what is going on. Instead, it's simply about being aware of what is taking place And understand that in the grander scheme of things, everything is going to be okay. And not to get our attention provoked back down into fear. So uh, I'm sure you know now they can only control a person's mind if they keep it in fear. So fear doesn't always uh, look like the classical fear, um, like Uh, being scared of ghosts or having a phobia. Fear can look like divide and conquer and not seeing another person or group's viewpoint because it challenges your own. Uh, Fear can also look like believing toxic sources of information simply because they are um, perceived as the accepted sense of authority. Fear can look like being ethnic centric. Fear can also look like never questioning authority. Fear can look like lumping everything and everyone we are threatened of into narrow, villainized categories that leave no room for nuance and therefore there is no capacity for learning, which is uh, true intelligence. We are intentionally being immersed into division. That's what war does. It divides us up into sides and it brings us down to our primitive animal nature where we are uh, fighting to survive. When we're in that state, control is effortless effortless because we are uh, stuck in fear. What this can look like online is... One minute you'll see a person speaking as if they are entering enlightenment and they're extremely positive. And then as soon as we see uh, mass conflict uh, projected on the news and uh, they become victims of that trauma-based mind control, then all of a sudden that person will crumble into a polarised version of who they were that is defending 
one side of the military industrial complex um, and villainizing the other, which is the complete opposite of enlightenment, which is unity consciousness. And all of the awareness that they were talking about before suddenly looks like it was a luxury that is reserved only for people who don't face any major problems in their life. And then they go straight back into uh, mummy media, daddy government. And this is what makes spirituality look fleeting or look like it's a phase or a trend to try and get clicks. But luckily, that's not what we are doing here. We are learning together how to maintain a higher vibration and a higher perception, even during these challenging times and not just when it's convenient. And we are not looking at it as a, a luxury that is just reserved for the spiritual. It's something that everybody needs to be aware of. And that is where true healing lies. Sending infinite love and peace to all of the innocent souls in the Middle East and to anyone else who has suffered from senseless violence. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos about spiritual self-mastery. Blessings to you all and I will see you in the next one.